Hello. Hi, Everett. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? Pretty good. I just listened to your friend and brother in the faith, Mr. Church, tee off on your administration for 45 minutes. And Mr. George McGovern of South Dakota is now teeing off on your Vietnamese policy. And I thought you needed a little defense on the floor of the Senate from your friend on the other side of the aisle. So I wondered whether, after your session with Ike, you had anything that I needed to know before I did it. No, uh, he uh, was in hearty agreement with what we were doing and uh, what our what our policy is out there. Uh, he uh, he founded it. I didn't tell the press, and I don't want to tell them. We talked about uh, a whole 10 or 15 matters. He was very happy and very good frame of mind, but I, uh, uh, he says that you just can't publish uh, everything that you know. The worst uh, problem we have is not the ambushes, uh, is not the... Uh, uh, the raids uh, is uh, uh, not uh, the accidents that occur to our own people. Uh, really, the worst problem we have is the speeches that are made about uh, negotiation. You are right. And about uh, pulling out. Uh, they use those. The communists take them and print them up in pamphlets and circularize them in newspapers and uh, they they keep all the government fearful and uh, they uh, they we have nine changes of government because all of them are afraid we are going to pull out and afraid we are going to negotiate now president eisenhower said uh, uh, this morning that uh, you don't negotiate let me get his exact language. I took it down, I think. He said, uh, uh, you don't negotiate until the other side must want to negotiate. That's first. And second, when you're dealing with these people, you must have a self-enforcing treaty uh, uh, that they do not keep their word. So whatever you agree on, is of no value because we agreed in 54 and he uh, he approved the agreement he told him he wouldn't join it or sign it but he agreed with them but they never did keep it and he had to write jim a letter and say i'll give you aid and i'll give you military aid and economic aid and advisory and everything else uh, he says that uh, we've got to make clear our purpose and that everybody should know that. Yeah. And that anybody that's got any doubt, wants any further information, that's just newspaper men trying to get you to limit yourself. Yeah. He says that our purpose is to preserve Southeast Asia. Yeah. That we know from Munich on that when you give the dictators feed on raw meat, and if they take South Vietnam, they take Thailand, they take Indonesia, they take Burma, they take, come right on back to the Philippines. Uh, he says that uh, uh, he thinks that we ought to, quote, shoot Rooney, unquote. Don't repeat that now. This is confidential. But he thinks the one of the big problems we have is we ought to be spending uh, half a billion dollars on information, that we do not do that anywhere, and that the Russians uh, uh, spend that much in one country, uh, that, we, that the communists take our speeches and they quote what Mansfield says or what Church says or what De Gaulle says or what uh, McGovern says, and they think that's the government of the United States. Uh, he says that he had uh, three methods. One is the voice of America. He would never allow anything to go over it except the truth. And that would be our purpose, is to preserve Southeast Asia, and we're going to stay there and do it. Yeah. Uh, he would not tell them how we're going to do it, because he says he wouldn't tell them when he's coming into Normandy. He said he had a very simple instruction from uh, the Chief of Staff Marshal. He said, proceed to the European theater uh, destroy the enemy.
Right. I said that's all he had. Yeah. Said he had no other instructions or no direction from Washington. I said you got the best man that you got out there, and General Goodpaster just came back and had briefed him up in New York and stayed oh, yeah. with him last night and came down with him this morning. Yeah. But he said our information service ought to be Voice of America, then we ought to use Free Europe stuff a lot, then we ought to have a lot of clandestine stuff. Said we don't have much clandestine. He said that uh, uh, we must uh, uh, we must realize that centralization is the refuge of fear, and we must not centralize things. We must uh, quit fussing about Taylor and Westmoreland in all these speeches. That Taylor is a great distinguished chairman, Joint Chiefs, and Westmoreland is the best we've got. And that when we talk about we've got to do everything here in the Senate or the Congress, that centralization is the refuge of fear. Uh, we can't uh, negotiate unless we're strong. He said negotiation means cooperation, and you've got to be strong in order to cooperate. That he would beef up, uh, uh, do everything in the world that he could with the with the uh, 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 information service. He would do everything he could with the CIA uh, to create a better morale and, if necessary, to almost buy it with that government. Uh, he says you've got to make uh, uh, these people inform the Vietnamese better. Said uh, he's convinced that uh, that they 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 must be informed. He said, uh, uh, you must push South Vietnamese participation. You've got to put your own boys with them. You've got to put your own planes with them. But said, when they go on a raid like they went on the other night, which he is very proud of, and Good Pastor had told him about it, they had 24 planes in it, and they destroyed some buildings. He said, each one of those uh, men come back, and they tell their families about what they did instead of what the Americans did. Sure. And that makes them want to fight. Uh, they have killed, and these, this is a record you may want to take. I don't know whether it, uh, you could use it. Uh, I wouldn't get it coming from the president, but 16,000. We've killed 16,000 Vietnamese, and uh, we've lost about 7,500. Uh, we've killed uh, 16,000 Viet Cong, and we've lost about 7,500 uh, uh, Vietnamese. That was in what period? This year. This, this last 12 months. Oh. There's 16,000 enemy have been killed, and we have lost 7,500 Vietnamese, and we've lost between 100 and 200 Americans. Yeah. That's about what you lost in the airplane crash in New York the other day. Yeah. Uh, he says that uh, he would uh, continue doing what we're doing, that he would make it clear that we're going to stay, uh, that uh, he thinks that I... Uh, that I ought to just uh, be guarded in my statements and not let them let some damn columnist needle you. Uh, well, I told him I was making a speech today at lunch to the businessman, and he went over and had lunch with me, just he and Good Pastor. And I wrote out a little note, and it said this, uh, I should like to end this visit with you, with a, this is to the businessman, with a word on the serious situation in Vietnam, which I know must be on the mind of each of you. As I have said so many, many times, and other presidents ahead of me have said, our purpose, our objective there is clear. I, and I said, that's what you got to be positive about. That's what he did when he went to Europe. The purpose was to destroy the German nation. That purpose and that objective is to join in the defense and the protection of freedom purpose is freedom of a brave people who are under attack. That is controlled and that is directed from outside their country. We have no ambition there for ourselves. We seek no dominion. We want no bases. We seek no conquest. We seek no wider war. So that he says, you've got to let the Russians and the Chicoms know that you're not wanting to fight them, you just want to protect these folks that are in your South Vietnam. But we must all understand that we will persist in the defense of freedom, and our continuing actions will be those which are justified and those that are made necessary 
by the continuing aggression of others. These actions, now here's where we fuzz it, but you know what it means. These actions will be measured. Not get too close to a uh, dangerous uh, thing. And fitting, meaning uh, adequate and, uh, and uh, uh, sufficient. And adequate. Then Eisenhower says that's a perfect statement. Uh, I was making it. He didn't sign it. I didn't ask him to. It's my speech. But he just said that's perfect. But I'd add one sentence. I said, what's that? And this is the one he added. Our stamina and the stamina of the American people is equal to this task. Yeah. Now, he said it may take a long time. He said it has taken a long time. The French were in there a long time. He said he had a long time in Europe. He said they'd been negotiating a year, I mean in Korea. He said they'd been negotiating a year and a half before he came in. He got into all of that. He was very talkative today and very happy and looked real young and pleased. And he, he liked what I'd said on the balance of payments. And he liked the budget under $100 billion. And he liked what Bob Anderson had told him. And he was in a good humor. Yeah. But uh, he said when he came in as president, they'd been negotiating in Korea for a year and a half. But we had agreed there that we wouldn't cross a certain area. And we had agreed there that we would use only a small type of weapon. And he said that uh, they knew that if we didn't go across a certain area, and if we would only use a small type of weapon, that uh, we never could have any settlement. Huh? because we tied our hands. Huh? So he said the first thing he did was call up Nehru, because he knew Nehru was a leak. And he told Nehru that he is willing to have a settlement. But uh, that uh, if they didn't settle, that he wasn't going to be bound by any sank, uh, uh, what do you call them? Uh, sank to uh, uh, any uh, uh, off-guard places. That all, none of them would be off-limits to him. Yeah. He'd bomb anything. Yeah. And he wasn't going to be bound by any sacred territory. Sanctuary. Sanctuary. That's word. He wasn't going to be bound by any sanctuary, number one. And he was not going to be bound by any weapons. He said, uh, we've made a hell of a lot of weapons. we spent a lot of money on them. What the hell we make them if we don't ever use them if we have to? Yeah. He said he never intended to uh, do anything except let that get back to him. And he said it did get back to him. And he said that then they came in wanting to negotiate with him. And said right at the crucial time, old man Ree turned loose 24,000 of their prisoners, which he was going to trade them, which was very helpful. And it damn near busted up the thing. But said they were so anxious after they heard that he was going to go anywhere and do anything. That, uh, and that uh, no telling what this crazy general would do with these weapons he had, because he knew Nehru had sent old Christian men in right yeah. quick to report it, yeah. that uh, they came in and signed up in Korea. Now, he said, you can't do that, and these fellows just ought to quit talking about negotiating and about uh, uh, sitting down and talking. He says, uh, China doesn't belong to the United Nations, and North Vietnam doesn't belong to the United Nations, and they've never, we tried to get them to come in there, and they won't do it. And the United Nations got no troops, and nobody go out there and patrol it. And we have said a hundred times everywhere that if they'll just get out of the country, well, we'll get out and we'll leave it alone. But they won't do that. They want the revolution. Uh, they want to spread the revolution, and that's their theory. Yeah. So he says, don't get yourself bound by saying, I will not use a bomber. He said, you don't have to say what Goldwater says, and I would, uh, I would burn the burn up the country. Uh, so what we have done, our way of saying that we intend to have a, a continuing actions is this. But we must all understand that we will persist in the defense of freedom and our continuing actions will be measured and fitting and adequate.
And that, that means we're not going to be fools and that we may have some talking guts. We may have what we had the other night. But we've got our people killing us. Keep one they got. They made one in Laos, 62. They're not keeping it. They made one out there, 54. They're not keeping it. They're not keeping it. They're not keeping it. Why do you think it's dead? Why do you think it's dead? Why do you think it's dead?